بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حبت في الله I wanted to mention a couple of important things about Sunnah and Bid'ah We've been ordered to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and we know that but many people have divided many of the Muslims unfortunately have divided into groups and sects and they all claim to follow the Sunnah and they all claim to be from Ahl Sunnah so how do we know what is the test how do we know if someone is following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what way should they be following Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says wa atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul obey Allah and obey his messenger oh, and obey his messenger so if you want to understand the Quran then you have to understand the Sunnah and you have to practice the Sunnah because the Prophet ﷺ was the best illustration of the Sunnah and was the best il illustration of the Qur'an as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentioned that when they asked about uh, the Prophet ﷺ she said خُلُقُهُ Quran, or كَمَا قَالَتْ that his manners was the Qur'an letting us know that the Prophet ﷺ illustrated the Qur'an which is the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so as we mentioned the Ummah has divided and everyone says they're from Ahl Sunnah but what is the criterion the Prophet ﷺ said if tarakatil yahud ala ithu wa sab'in firqa wa if tarakatil nasara ala ithnatain wa sab'in firqa wa sa taftariku hadhi ummah ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa kullaha fin nara la wahida kulna min hiya ya rasulullah qala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa sahabi the Prophet ﷺ said the Jews broke into 71 sects the Christians into 72 sects my ummah into 73 sects all of them in the fire except one and they say who are they Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Those who are upon my Sunnah And the Sunnah of my rightly guided companions Meaning that from each of those nations uh, More importantly from the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That there would only be one that would be saved from the fire That doesn't mean the rest are going to be internally in the fire So we have to understand that although the ulama They differ, the Salaf differed over the tafsir of that hadith Does it mean all the rest of the sects are uh, in the fire permanently or does that mean they, they, they would taste some of the fire for being in a sect for calling to other than the Sunnah so this is where the ulama differ the important point that we want to understand is that we want to be with those that the Prophet ﷺ said would be saved from the fire all of them in the fire except one he said those who are upon my Sunnah and the way of my companions so that means that when we say we're on the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah of his companions that means we're talking about the Salaf of this Ummah we're talking about the Ras of the Salaf the Salaf of Salih meaning the righteous predecessors who are they? they're the Sahaba and then the Tabi'een who came after them, their students, and the Itba'a Tabi'in, those who follow them in righteousness, their righteous students. Those meaning the first three generations. Where do we understand this from? Is this something the Salafi scholars today have just made up? No. It comes from the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, who said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet ﷺ said, The best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Letting us know it's those first three generations. Who? The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Uh, then the Tabi'een, rahimahumullah, and the Itba'a Tabi'een. Rahimahumullah. So those first three generations, that is who the Salaf al-Salih, the righteous predecessors are and we're ordered to follow them that's what distinguishes us between those uh, Sufis and other groups who say that they're following the Sunnah you will find the most extreme Sufis who worship the graves and say it's okay to, to, to make uh, to wassel with the dead who said the dead and the living are the same it's really their essence uh, and that their essence brings us closer to Allah because they were righteous pious people and we could call on them in life and ask them to pray for us why not call on them in death and ask them to pray for us this is what they say and and then they have the nerve to call themselves Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah when the Prophet Sallallahu didn't do it the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Ajma'een didn't do it and the uh, Tabi'een didn't do it Rahimahullah but they will take either d weak fabricated narrations to uh, verify or to authenticate what they do their practices or they will make a ta'wil facet a weird uh, strange interpretation of, of the evidence they'll say hey well the Prophet ﷺ went to uh, was in Al-Barzakh and went to uh, Ma'raj uh, uh, you know went to and met Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and the other NBA and Isa and 
Well, when he ascended to the heavens, so this lets us know that, uh, and he communicated them and they had died, or they were living in Al-Barzakh. And they use all kind of strange under uh, ta'wil. But what the ulama of Sunnah say about this strange ta'wil that the extreme Sufis use is that this, our life in this life, where I hear and smell and taste, is not like the life in our Barzakh. And we don't have any description of a Barzakh except for what's in the Quran and the Sunnah. So we don't speculate from our opinions and say, oh, well, if I can ask my uh, a righteous brother or sister to pray for me in this life, I can do it when they're dead. No, that is their uh, in understanding, which is ghayr maqbul. It's not accepted. And it's not from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although they claim to be from Ahlul Sunnah. So the point being is what? Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat. As the ulama say, this is a qaid, this is a principle. Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat. Which means that the proof of something is in its reality, not in what its claim is or what it's called. So for example, if I say that this right here is an umbrella, you are going to say, and I say, no, this is my umbrella, and if it starts to rain, I'm going to hold it over my head. The people would say, no, that's a tablet. That's not an umbrella. I'm going to say, no, it's an umbrella. I call it an umbrella. I feel like it's an umbrella. It, it, you know, to me, it's an umbrella. That is not what it is in its reality. The reality of this substance is that it is made out, out of particular materials, and it is a tablet, but it is not an umbrella. So the point being, even if someone claims that they're from Ahlul Sunnah, does not mean they're from Ahlul Sunnah. Even if someone claims that they're Salafi, does not mean they're Salafi. Until their, uh, their actions, and their manners, and their Aqidah, their creed, and their morals, and their fiqh, and their uh, uh, minhaj or way of da'wah is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and his Sahaba radiAllahu ta'ala and ajma'een and what the Salaf, how they understood. Another thing I wanted to mention is that bid'ah is not accepted in the religion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever does something in this re religion, in this affair of ours, will have it rejected, letting us know that bid'ah, that something new in the religion is unacceptable. It's not accepted. If you do an act of worship, you increase your raka'at in the prayer. When the Prophet ﷺ prayed raka'tain for uh, fajr, and you say, no, I'm going to pray thalath raka'at, because that's more raka'at, maybe I'll get more reward and I'll come closer to Allah. No, you can't come closer to Allah, closer than what the Prophet ﷺ was upon. And he said that whoever does something in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So that means that that bid'ah will be rejected. Likewise, how does Ahl Sunnah deal with Ahl bid'ah? We have to understand that Ahl Sunnah has different levels, meaning the people People, they have different levels of knowledge and different levels of practice and understanding and different levels of representation of the Sunnah. We are not like the scholars. We are not like the strong students of knowledge who have knowledge and practice which are beneficial. But rather, so we have different levels. Likewise, Ahl Bidah, they have different levels. There are some people who have Bidah Mukaffara, meaning Bidah that takes them out of the fold of Islam. And some people have Bidah Ghayr Mukaffara, which means Bidah, which doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam, but rather they are still Muslim, they still worship Allah, but they have some Bidah in their practices, some Bidah in their worship, so they need to be called back to the Sunnah. So, with the issue of Hajr, I want to mention very quickly that we look to the benefits and harms. If there's benefit and cutting off from a person, then, meaning that it's going to, by being with them, it's going to be harmful to your religion, or by being with them, you feel you're going to be affected by their bid'ah, or by being with them, you think you're going to strengthen them in their bid'ah, and you're not going to influence them in a way, then it's better to leave them in that situation. But don't rush to make hajr. That's the point, is understanding that these issues have harms and benefits that must be looked at. And these harms and benefits are best uh, looked at by the ulama, those people from Ahl Ilm who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who have knowledge of the religion and have fiqh fi deen. Man yurid Allahu bi khayran yafiqhu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, gives him understanding of the religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al nafi, rizqan tayyibu, amal al mutaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.